Hello guys, welcome back. So in the last few days, I have seen a video on YouTube showing me a weak collider onto stock system on Unity. And actually, it seems to be very interesting. Then I just decided to make my own system to help optimizing my game, Tires on Fire, and make a video about it. You can watch the video from the link down in the description. But once I published the video, people asked me to do a tutorial. And here I am. So today I'm gonna do a tutorial about the system and explain everything to you in detail. So get ready and let's get started. So before we start, let me explain to you how the anti-stock system works. So as you can see here we have a wheel hitting the ground and this wheel have a wheel collider. And as you can see, the wheel collider has an axis starting from the middle to the bottom. So if we put any object that has a collider at any point of the wheel border, it's not gonna be detected unless the object intersects with the axis and that's where the problem is. And I have found a solution for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the same axis and rotate it around the middle point using a script. And that's the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing is we're gonna calculate the maximum distance between the hit points and the wheel border and add that value to the wheel radius. And by that, the wheel model is gonna be on top of any object that appears in front of it. Now let's move on to Unity. Here I have this project, which is the Tires on Fire project. You can watch some videos about it from the links down in the description, where I'm actually testing the physics and a lot of other stuff. So basically I have this car over here that has a controller and four wheel colliders. And behind it I have this simple scene that I have got from the vehicle tools package on the Unity Hub Learn tab. You can download it for free. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Now let's create a C-sharp script and name it anti stock system and open it with Visual Studio or any other text editor you have on your computer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is getting rid of these namespaces and the comments because I don't need them. Then I'm gonna rename the start method to awake. And after that, I'm gonna create some variables. So the first variable is a public transform variable named wheel model. The second one is a public integer named raise number with a default value equal to 36. Third one is a public float named raise max angle with a default value equal to 180. The fourth one is a private wheel collider variable named underscore wheel collider. And the fifth variable is a private float named original radius. So now to assign the private variables, we go under the awake method and type underscore wheel collider equal to get component type of wheel collider. Then the original radius equal to underscore wheel collider dot radius. And as you know, this script is not gonna work without a wheel collider component. So we go on the top over here and require it. Now everything has been set up. So we go under the update method and make a for loop with the counter named i equal to zero. And when i is inferior or equal to raise number, then i is gonna grow up. And under this for loop, we're gonna make an if statement with a condition. If a method called physics.raycast becomes true, then it has detected a collider. And after that, we're gonna calculate the maximum distance between the hit point and the wheel border. So we type physics.raycast and we open the parentheses. Now let me give you some explanations to make you guys understand how this method works. So raycast is a boolean function that creates an axis in world space and if any object intersects with the axis, its value becomes true. This function depends on four parameters. The first one is a vector 3 and his role is to indicate the axis start point. The second parameter is a vector 3 as well, but it indicates the direction of the axis. The third is an outraycast hit parameter, which is the variable that we're gonna store the data of the detected collider into it, as well as the axis data. And the last parameter is a float and it indicates the length of the axis. 
Now let's get back to Visual Studio. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna type the parameters values. So the start point is wheelmodel.position. The direction is a little of a complicated thing. So I'm gonna make a variable type of vector3, name it ray direction equal to vector3.0. Then I'm gonna copy that variable name and put it in the direction parameter field. For the next parameter, I'm gonna make an outraycast hit variable named hit. And finally, the axis length is gonna be underscore wheel collider dot radius. Now let's get back to the direction variable. So I'm gonna change the value to transform that forward, which is the direction of the transform that this script has. And we're gonna rotate that vector 3 using the quaternion dot angle axis function. So this function depends on two parameters. The first one is a float variable and it indicates the angle in degrees. And the second parameter is a factor 3 variable, which is another direction variable that we're gonna use as an axis to rotate anything around it. So the angle is gonna be i multiplied by raise max angle divided by raise number. And the axis is gonna be transformed or right. And I'm gonna add some outputs over here. So I'm gonna type debug.drawray. The starting point is wheelmodel.position. The direction vector is ray direction multiplied by original radius and the color is color.green now let's go to unity and add the script to the car wheel colliders then assign the wheel model variable then test it out and as you can see everything works fine except when the wheel steers the lines are not aligned so I have to multiply the ray direction by another quaternion dot angle axis function the angle is gonna be underscore wheel collider dot steer angle and the axis of the angle is transformed dot up. Now let's see how things work. As you can see everything looks cool, but I still have a problem. I want the line start angle to be at the bottom of the wheel. So right here I'm gonna add this formula. So I'm gonna type plus and open two parentheses. Inside the first one I'm gonna type 118 minus raise max angle and then divide the expression by 2. And don't worry I'm gonna explain that. So let's go to unity and test it out. As you can see, everything works so perfect. So here's the explanation of what I did. Let's say that the raise max angle is equal to 118 degrees. Basically, the result of the expression is going to be zero and the beginning of the lines is gonna stay at its original position. But what if I change the raise max angle to something else? let's say 90 degrees the expression value is gonna be 45 degrees and the line's beginning angle is gonna be changed and put the middle line at the bottom angle of the wheel so after we've made the axis work let's do the calculation stuff so let's make a local float variable on the beginning of the update method named radius offset equal to zero and this variable is gonna contain the maximum distance between the hit points of all the axes and the wheel border. Then we go down here and type radius offset equal to mathf.max and we're gonna compare the last radius offset value by the new value which is underscore wheel collider dot radius minus hit dot distance. Then after the for loop down here I'm gonna type underscore wheel collider dot radius equal to original radius plus radius offset. By the way mathf.max returns the maximum value of all the permissions meters it has. So now everything should work correctly. And as you can see the wheel is kind of shaking a little bit. That's because of the high execution rate of the script. So to fix that we have to make the final value more smoother using mathf.lerp or mathf.lerp and clamp. So these two functions are basically the same and they depend on three parameters. The first one is the starting value. The second one is the value that we want to reach and the third third one is the factor between the two first parameters. And here comes the difference. The lerp function factor is clamped between 0 and 1, while the lerp and clamped function factor is not clamped, and it can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. You might say that doesn't make a difference to me, 
Well, that's not true, because if we make the factor equal to time the delta time, the difference appears, and it will seem to you like the lerp and clampid is much faster reaching the final value than the lerp, when the result is approximately at the starting value or at the finishing value. Now let's get back to Visual Studio and replace this by mathf.lerp and clampit. The starting value is the old underscore we collider.radius. The finishing value is original radius plus radius offset. And the factor is gonna be time dot delta time multiplied by 10. So now everything should work correctly. But I guess some of you had his wheel colliders totally shaking like that. That's because the Raycast is detecting the car colliders. To show that, I'm gonna add an output before the radius offset calculation. So I'm gonna type debug.drawline. The starting point is wheelmodel.position. The finishing point is hit.point. And the color is color.thread. Now let's see what is happening. So as you can see, the ray casts are actually detecting the car collider. So to prevent that problem, we have to check if the collider that the raycast is hitting is not a child of the car controller. So I'm gonna type on the top of the script using car controller.main. You don't have to do that because that's related to my car controller script. Now I'm gonna make a private variable and put the name of the mono behavior that I have attached to the car parent and name that variable car controller. So we go over here and add an if statement. So if not, hit.transform is child of carcontroller.transform. Then we open the bracket and put these two lines between them. And everything should work as it should be. Now you might think that the stuck problem is fixed. No, you're wrong. There is still a problem with the wheel collider sideways stuck. So to fix that, I'm gonna copy these lines of code and put them down here. And let's change the starting point of the raycast by adding plus wheelmodel.write multiplied by the half of the wheel width. And we rename the hit variable to write hit. You might notice that the wheel width is undefined. So we're gonna make a public float variable named wheel width with a default value of 0.15. Now change the starting position of the outputs and recopy the code and redo the same thing to the left side of the wheel. But instead of plus, make it minus. So if we go to Unity, you can see that the whole problem has been solved and everything works fine. Though, there is still another problem. As you know, the Raycast detects any kind of collider even triggers. So on this if statement I'm gonna add and not hit.collider.isTrigger and do the same thing for the other if statements and if we go to unity and test that it's gonna work out for sure. So that's pretty much it for this episode. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and enable the notifications bell so you don't mess up any upcoming video. Also consider joining our Discord server where you can ask me any question you want and I will surely help you. And don't forget to support my team on Patreon to help us complete our project as fast as possible and buy some cool tools too. So yeah, that's it. See you later guys and thanks for watching.